Hi, I am the co-founder of CrowdSurf. Director of events. Bass player. Video producer. Digital director. Songwriter. Manager of touring. Director of content and operations. And you're listening to the Springboard. 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 Springboard Music Podcast. You might know Alex Quattlebaum as a professor at Belmont University. Or if you happen to be a VIP at the Megan Trainer Untouchable Tour or the Ariana Grande Dangerous Woman Tour, there's also a really good chance you saw him running around the venue. More recently, though, Alex is a senior manager at Future Shirts, an independent merchandising company focusing on e-commerce, touring, and supply. They've worked with artists such as Torn Wells, Chainsmokers, The Band Camino, Need to Breathe. I cannot wait for you to listen to this fascinating episode. So because I'm an interviewer and I do my prep, that requires stalking. And so- <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you They're know? They're all lies. It's all lies. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a good thing. This is a good yeah. thing. <laughs> Did you know on Rate My Professor, you have 100% approval rating? Uh, no, I did not know that <laughs> until <laughs> a few days ago. And here's how I found out. Uh, one of my friends, Brian, decided to Google me. And he goes, do you know that you have these ratings? And I knew I was on Rate My Professor because I had been told I was on there. But I had no idea. I don't I don't read any of that. That's like I read comments on Instagram. People are like, oh, yeah, you don't read stuff. That's a lot. Everybody reads it. But <laughs> I actually do stay off Rate My Professor because I get an evaluation every semester. So I knew I was on there, but I had no idea what any of them said until they told me they're like, oh, you've got like three or four reviews and you're like at 100 percent. I was like, yes. And so so I didn't I didn't know it was 100 percent, but that's really funny though that <laughs> you're at a hundred percent so uh i have high standards for this interview okay. just so okay. you know <laughs> what did you teach at belmont i actually wrote a class uh i wrote it on tour merchandising and so what what it all entails is they came to me i was on staff there and they're like hey we're looking at adding some new elective courses. Would you be interested in piling in a class? And you know there's a lot of steps that have to happen. A pilot has to happen. And then after it's been taught for, I think, two solid semesters, then they can actually make it a permanent class and and, um, petition for it to be accredited by their um, business accrediting body, which is the highest in all college standards. Um, So I piloted it, wrote it, and I was like, hey, I think we need to do this in three steps. It can mainly be about merchandise, but also let's talk about sponsorship and VIP. And then let's just talk about the overarching tour world. So that's what it covers. Um, It's called Tour Merchandise and it's now an official class in the catalog at Belmont and has been for uh, just before 20, just before the pandemic. I always reference that back, but like it's been a permanent class for about three years now. And I'm the only one that's taught it and I'm the only one that's written it. So so. that's incredible. Are you (laughs) still teaching there? I still teach it. Yeah. I teach it one night a week um, on Wednesdays. And it's it's um, it's really helpful for me because I get to live in it every day and, and work in it. So I have these outlines that I give students and then they go, hey, can you pass me your notes? And I actually show them like, it's just the outline. Like I just go off the outline. Like I have nothing written down. Um, so it would be hard for someone to pick up and teach it because none of my notes are there. All they would have to go on is the outlines. And so I just get to input and change it as things change. And um, I really enjoy it. And and the students get a lot out of it, I hope, because it's more practical than theory. But I also get a lot out of it from them. So they teach me just as much as I teach them. So So what you're telling me with you not having any notes is that you have job security in teaching that (laughs) class. (laughs) Because no one else can do it. (laughs) Genius. Genius. So, yeah, I couldn't hand them a, I couldn't hand them the binder and be like, okay, so you're good to go. They would be like, huh? So, which maybe I subconsciously did that on purpose. I, you don't have to tell me your secrets, but anybody who's listening needs to take notes on if you ever write a curriculum, don't give away all the tricks. Right. Was that ever the dream job? No. It was not like I had no, like I knew what merchandise was, but I had no idea that that's what I was going to be doing. So I was an intern at a management company for about a year when I was in college. And then I was at a label for roughly six months. So I I, I was a transfer. So I only had about 18 months of ability to intern. 
And so I was like, okay, how do I make the most out of this internship? What do I need to do? I really had the desire to be an artist of management, which is why I went the management route first. And so I went with the management company, was there for almost a year. And then I was like, I really need to probably branch out a little bit and learn some label stuff. And then right about this time of year in 2012, so it's been 10 years ago, um, right before Thanksgiving, that manager came back to me and asked me if I would be interested. She was like, has the label offered you a job? And I said, no, they have not. Um, at that point I was in the marketing department, but I was also working on some strategies, promotions and those kind of things. And, um, I said, they haven't, I said, do you have anything for me? And she said, well, I don't have anything in the office, but would you be interested in going on the road and handling merchandise and kind of being a catch all a little bit? I did it a little bit as an intern and then I was supposed to do a little bit more, but some shows kept getting canceled because we were opening for someone else. So, um, I just sort of fell into it and, um, it just, one thing led to the another. And so I graduated in December and I was on the road three weeks later. Um, so Started that, toured with them for about a year or just under a year um, because, quite frankly, I didn't really want to be on the road. I mean, in full transparency, I did not want to do it. It had nothing to do with the job. Love the people that I was working with at the merch company that was literally, like, literally they handed me, an, at that point, Excel, and it said, hey, there's 2 million sales connected. Don't F it up, is what they said yeah. to me. And I said, okay, great. They're like, are you good at Excel? And I was like, not 2 million, I'll, I'll figure it out. So um, that's what I did. That's and, what um, people need to know is mm -hmm. like, you're not going to have all the answers in the beginning. Mm -hmm. There's no guide. So, mm -hmm. No, the correct answer. And if anybody asks if you know how to do something is I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Always. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I'll figure it out. And and you always do. And, you know, there are some bumps in along the way. And, you know, I had some very basic, like hit this button, hit this button so that, you know, that these and some explanation of what was talking to each other. But other than that, I just went with it. And I was like, you know, I got this cool, like whatever, throw it at me. And so I did that for about, I think it was like actually 10 months. And I, I just was not digging the road. Um, It's a hard life. And so I took a job at Sony, well, it was at that point Sony ATV in their accounting department as a temp through like this holiday season. And I was making very little money and was 18 people's assistants. And that's when I found out very quickly that I was not a good assistant whatsoever. <laughs> I don't think anybody would be a good assistant under that circumstance. <laughs> it was, it was, it was challenging because you're like, different people would ask you that you had your job, but then you had the different people asking you for things and you're like, which one's priority? Because normally it wasn't necessarily the person asking, but it was more so the task. And um, they were also like, I was responsible for ordering food and all of those kind of things for their end of month. And that was just really challenging for me because when I was on the road, very quickly did I adapt to it. I was running the show. The merch company just sort of took it for it was. I had a relationship with the artist and we were friendly and, and I was helping with some of his social media, helping with some of the VIP. Just it sort of, formulated all the way around. So I was used to making decisions. So then to transition to be 18 people's assistant, it was a complete mind game. I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is how I need to do it. And um, the, the temp was a temp permanent, so it wasn't going to go away. But I realized very quickly that I was not going to want to move up in that direction. So I was like, okay, where do I want to start applying? Where do I want? So I took several job interviews. Um, and for whatever reason, there was a few that I didn't get. There was a couple that I got offered that, to be quite honest, I was going through the motions, but to be fair to those people, I would have taken it. And if something else came up, I would have jumped very quickly. And I don't think that's the right approach. And I think that that's what a lot of students do now right out of college. And sometimes the waiting period is almost, they think, oh, I'm not going to get another opportunity. I have to take what it is. Um, and sometimes you do, but sometimes there is a little bit of grace that you can give yourself and you don't want to be that person that changes all the time. So I, I completely I said, agree with that. It is. It's, it's true. Like it, you just, you, but it's because you're scared. Nothing else is going to come. Right. You know, but you don't, but I agree. Like if you take that and then the right thing does come along, mm -hmm. you don't want the reputation of being that millennial or Gen Z mm -hmm. or flake. whatever, mm -hmm. that flake mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. doesn't understand the grind and doesn't understand right. the opportunity you've been given. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, you bring up a great point of that, that balance is very challenging. Mm -hmm. It's super challenging. And, and, you know, I'm sure I probably messed up a 
few times along the way, like I don't necessarily have any regrets, but I, if I was to sit back and go, would I have done this differently? Would I have done, I don't know, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't have, but I was glad that I waited and bet on myself because uh, I eventually went back to that merch company and I said, Hey, so I want to try the road again. Um, they really didn't want me to leave initially. They tried to talk me out of it. And I said, so can I, can I go back out on the road? And by the way, I do not want to go on a country tour. I was like, I want to do something completely different. Yeah. I, I was like, that's my whole thing. Like when I came in, I was like, I want to work in country. I want to work in management. This is me ho holler, you know, um, from Arkansas. So like, that's what I grew up on, but I wanted to try something different. I wanted something to pull me directly out of my comfort zone, even though I was going to be doing merch, I was going to do something different. And they said, actually, yeah, we need a third on this tour. And can you leave in a week? And I was like, perfect timing great. Let me put in my notice. I went to the Sony people. I was like, I know I'm supposed to give two weeks. They need me in a week. This has come out of nowhere. And they could not have been more gracious and, and been like, no, this is a temp job. You have to go and do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And then five years later, I was on the road for five years and, and till I moved to where I started on staff at Belmont. And it was the greatest five years changing different tours all the time meeting lots of people traveling the world. I've done 48 states and 13 countries. So um, I literally only have Hawaii and Alaska left. So, um, and two of my clients have went to Alaska this year and I have not had time to go because I just don't have the time to travel anymore as often. So, um, but, which is kind of ironic, but I'll get there at some point. So I did merch for about three of those five years. And eventually I was like, okay, I've done what I can do, but I wanted some variety. So, um, I had already worked with a lot of companies that did the VIP services. So I kind of transitioned between um, VIP and merch. So I, I kept very loyal to those companies, which I think was very helpful um, until I, it got so big for me on the merch side where I was getting calls from everybody, which was very, very fortunate about. That made it really challenging, but I stayed very loyal to those companies and they moved me around, which kept me very busy. So if they didn't have a VIP tour for me, but someone had a merch tour, like I would just do merch. And then if I, if they had a VIP tour, but not a merch, I could just flip back and forth. And so my background of being in marketing and management and all those kind of things made me a prime candidate to, to deal with some of the people. Um, because it is hard to deal with the fans and be forward facing on a tour. Um, you have to have a personality that sort of rolls with it, but also has a little bit of edginess to your, to you where you can kind of put people keep, keep it going, but also be like, you're having a great time. Everything's awesome. Let's keep this going. Let's not complain. Let's do customer service. You know, there's a very fine line of how you have to move in shape. So, and then, and so that's what I did for five years and it was, the greatest time and I have the greatest friends that are still friends to this day and we are all on group text and I, I literally every tour except one that I've ever done I keep in touch with the majority of the people I've worked with and I think that that's really cool. Did you start out and end in the same job? So the reason I connect with that merch company is all of these merch companies have deals with the artist. So the artist may either have a 360 deal with the record label. So if a record label is associated with a merch company, that may be their merch company. Um, Live Nation has a merch company that's literally called Live Nation Merch, which is a combination of merch companies that have now been kind of under that umbrella. Merch Traffic, um, FEA is what it was at the time. Um, and Bravado has Universal and Warner has its own music company and Sony has Sony Thread Shop. So all of these majors have adapted to have their own merch companies They in all of these things. So the reason I was able to connect with the merch company initially was because that is who initially paid me, even though the manager kind of picked me out. They're like, hey, we want to use this guy. They're like, this guy's never done it before. And she's like, it's going to be fine. And so... um <laughs> Thankfully, she gave me the opportunity between her and the artists. I'm, I'm forever grateful for them um, because they didn't have to do that. You know, they could have been like, oh, yeah, we're going to pick someone else. But at that time, brand new artist, no budget. It was not even a budget. It was an udget, you know, without the B. <laughs> so you have to pick and choose and give people the chances to grow. And so that's how I connected. And then I worked with that company directly and the artists and managers and those kind of things. But because I had worked with them so closely, that developed that relationship. And that was FEA. So that was the Live Nation. So obviously Live Nation has a VIP company and there's a lot of other VIP companies that I can list a few of those, but they are 
through working with those merchant VIP always worked hand in hand because typically they're sharing a truck on a major tour. They have the merch on the same thing. They may be giving out merch to some of the VIP. So you get to know those people. And so from that, I was able to connect with VIP Nation um, and Kelly Golden, who runs VIP Nation um, LA. And then there's a Nashville division now as well. Um, And we just, they just gave me an opportunity to go out and do things. And they very much are strategic about putting people on tour. So whatever the artist wants in terms of personality top and those kind of things, they really try to match. And that's really important on tour because if you don't, if you have like an old gruff guy and it's like a really popular female artist that you need a little bit of energy for that you're not so like in the sticks, I'm your guy versus someone that's been doing it 20 years. So And then they still have to pay me what they may pay that person that's 20 years, but they also have to make sure that things work. So um, that's kind of how those relationships developed. And then after that happened, I sort of started getting seeked out via LinkedIn. Um, A couple of tours came to me directly. They're like, hey, you've done this. Like, would you be interested in doing this? And I'm like, sure. And I didn't always have to be the lead. I think that was what was very helpful to me. Like I had the capabilities to be a lead. and that was great. But I also could step into that second role and make the leads life much better. And I think that that's about ego. And some people are like, no, I'm always number one. I don't really care about being number one. As long as that check goes in, I don't really care about being number one. So, um, but from there, it was, that helped me. And I just met new people and, and, um, I was very loyal to Live Nation and, um, VIP Nation in terms of the companies that I worked with. Um, but eventually I started stepping out and I worked with, um, L King, which you can see behind me, um, who I love dearly. And they, that came from management and just another sort of relationship type thing. So, um, I think though that was where some of the bouncing was in, but I'm trying to think to your second part of that question. When I left the road, I was working with VIP Nation. My last tour was with VIP Nation and I left the road and they actually had me booked for the rest of 2017 and I just was exhausted. And I was like, I don't know. I was at that point of 25, five years of doing it. Like what is next? What does, how is that defined for me? Um, Because you do get pigeonholed and you do get sort of stuck in a rut sometimes and so that's when I left. But, you know, there's a lot of merch companies that would reach out. You know, I now work for Future Shirts. Um, there's a lot of locals here in town in Nashville. There's a lot of smaller companies to go along with those majors. Um, and, you know, there's pros and cons to being with those companies. And But I love that I get to work at Future Shirts now because it's a really fun family. And I get to bring what I've done with all of those other big companies to one of those independents that is not owned by a record label and is not owned by a big entity. We very much operate independently. And Future Shirts, they do merch for Chainsmokers, Van Camino, Need to Breathe, Tor and Wells. Is that correct? Yes, that's some, yes, yeah, there's some of those clients there. We have some additional clients. Um, we very much don't as much pull, pull, you know, put out who our clients are um, from like a, a a public perspective, but if you get on our website, you can see like some of the ones that we work with and there's, it's a full service merch company. So we do everything from supply to e to touring, which are all three different fun things that are wrapped up together. Um, but they also operate very, they work very differently. So when you're doing a full service deal and you have someone that you're doing all that for, that's one thing. But if you're just doing supply or e for someone, that's another kind of thing. So, um, but but we're a Nashville based company, but we work with people across. I mean, we have K-pop, we have rock, we have pop, we have folk, we have country, we have CCM. I mean, we have we run the gauntlet of we have a huge, you know, run the gauntlet of things that we do. We have a great we've just started getting a bunch of comedians, which has been a whole nother world. That's been really fun as well. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of fun when you aren't necessarily defined by the deal that the record label signs or, or the deal that the major promoter signs, um, you know, they may be able to write a bigger check and be able to do those kind of things, but we're also more hands-on. And I think that's, what's really fun about my job is that I am very hands-on with all of my clients now. And that's, uh, as opposed to just doing the rotation of things. I will say when I was on the label side, I remember getting those white and black future shirts boxes, quite 
often. And yes. I <laughs> loved seeing them and I loved working with your team at Future Shirts. So um, I, I, love I to can hear attest that. as well. <laughs> great, great, great company. Yes. I think you brought up a couple of really fascinating points when you were talking through your journey with Live Nation mm-hmm. that people don't realize, which mm-hmm. is what's so fun about this podcast. Mm-hmm. I did not realize personally how important it is, but it makes sense. I did not realize how important it is to match your branding of your merch reps to your tour. Mm-hmm. I just thought like skilled people go out and do your thing, but that's not the case. It's not really always. important mm-hmm. to match image with image. It is. It is. And, you know, sometimes it just you know, you have to have those people that can handle the volume. So that's kind of what was really fun when I was talking about being a first versus a second. Like there were some tours that maybe I wasn't the, I wasn't the highest on the totem pole or didn't have the most experience, but I was a great person to throw in there because they could do their thing and I could do all the, the, the branding and I could do all the, the sort of front facing things um, because I do have kind of more of an upbeat personality. And, and when you go on those pop tours, think, think pop all the pop females that are really popular but also the males like and what their audiences look like like it's it you have to be aware of those kind of things and you you want to make sure that the rep is comfortable on the road but you also want to make sure that it fits the crew and it you know it's a lot of there's that terminology like it's about the hang um more so than the job sometimes which is can be frustrating sometimes but um Ultimately, if you can not be a jerk and still hang out, but also get your job done and stay out of the way, you're going to be fine. So I completely agree. Truly, as frustrating as it is, it's more about are you a good hang? Because they're mm-hmm. long days and you mm-hmm. need to be able to handle the stress and handle mm-hmm. all the dynamics well. You don't want to contribute right. to it. Right. Um, I saw the sun you, come up a lot, but not from being up late. It was from still being up working. So you, and you have to be ready for that. Hey, thanks for listening to the Springboard Music Podcast. If you like what you're hearing, feel free to follow us on TikTok or Instagram at Springboard Music. And if there's anyone that you would like to hear us interview or a position you're particularly interested in in the music industry, we're not above hearing our content towards what you want. After all, this is for you.